Hello and welcome to another Big Finish review. In this Big Finish review, I'll be continuing my look at the new Master Trilogy in the form of Vampire of the Mind. Yes, without the vampires of fangs. Very interesting indeed. Now, if you've been a long time listener of Big Finish, um, then you know that these two shouldn't really meet the Sip Doctor and the a Alex McQueen's Master because obviously the first Doctor to face the Alex McQueen Master was the seventh Doctor in the form of Unit Dominion. Now, with that you can sort of expect a bit of memory wiping and a bit of memory loss. Now that's not really a spoiler because obviously timelines and all that stuff, eh? Um, but that's not the only thing this story has to offer. Obviously the chemistry between the Sip Doctor and Alex McQueen's Master is another good thing to check out for, but this story sort of gives Alex McQueen's master a sort of new life and it gives him sort of something different to do and it expands on his master, which I'll talk about in the review uh, when I get to the master within that. So without further ado, let's look how this CD is presented, then we'll go into my first thought of when the title and the synopsis was revealed, that's going to be a new feature in the review. And then my thoughts so, on the story. So, cover art, we have the master, the sixth doctor, we have this nice sunset sky there. We've got some waves going across there and the brain. And we've got the master's lovely torch, which I guess is meant to represent a TCE. We've got the Doxu banner there, the spine, and the bio for the story. So do feel free to pause to know what this story is about. And the cast list and the total running time is... 120 Inside minutes. Inside the booklet we have advertising for the next instalment of the two masters, the concluding part. Advertising for Doctor Who magazine and production credits and of course the reversible and cover. And the disc art is exactly the same on both discs. Alright then, onto the new feature of the review where I look at when the title and the synopsis was first announced. So what were my first thoughts on that? So when they revealed the title Vampire of the Mind, I thought it was going to be a nice little throwback to Project Twilight with the Forge returning which would be very exciting if it did, because if you follow my channel for a long time, you'll know that I'm a big lover of Project Twilight. It's probably one of my favourite, probably my favourite Sick Doctor adventure out of the whole big finished catalogue. It's that good, I absolutely adore it. So I thought, oh, could the Forge be returning? Um, obviously, it seems a bit sort of stupid me thinking that now, because it's a vampire, and I just thought of this because it is sort of a They announced story. that it was part of the Master Trilogy. I was quite excited, because obviously, like I've said before, it is the Alex McQueen mast and the Sixth Doctor, so that was quite an exciting thought, to have those two paired together. So it's sort of like the locum doctors, but with the master really, because you had Jeffrey Beavers with the Fifth Doctor, and you've got um, the Sixth Doctor with Alex McQueen's master. Um, so from the synopsis, I got this feeling of the Sea Devils mixed with Time the Rani. And yeah, I think that's the best way to describe this story, because when I was listening to this, I definitely got the feeling of a 1970 story, and the Sea Devils is quite a prominent thing within this story, so you think that'd be a positive for me, but you'll find out if that is a positive within the story in the actual review. Um, so it did feel like a 1970 story with the whole sort of Sea Devils aspect, um, and the whole scientists going missing, um, a bit like Tamarani in, in a weird way. And it, it just has that sort of 1970s feel. Uh, from the synopsis and the story definitely Vampire of the Mind by Justin Richards. Now this story has been scoring 9 out of 10 which is a phenomenal rating for a story so let's see if I agree with that rating. Now this story like I've said before definitely does have that 1970s feel which I absolutely love so there's a positive straight away um, because the 70s is my favourite era of Doctor Who because you've got the fantastic John Pertwee and Tom Baker and just fantastic golden stories throughout. Um, now, this story has this great mystery, what is woven throughout all four parts of the story. Um, now, another positive for this story for me is that this story links with the Sea Devils with it using the same location and a scheme that the Masters had in the pipeline, had in the pipeline for a long time. Um, now I've begun to sort of notice a pattern with the Master stories, uh, with the Master trilogy, um, is that you either get a fantastic first half and a naff second half, but this story follows the suit of a naff first half and a pretty good second half. Now the individual part, part one as you would expect is very much setting up the foundations of the story, um, which to me just drags with it just laying down uh, the mysteries, what's Dominus, what's happening at the castle, um, which I suppose is alright, but to me I just felt like it just dragged on a bit too much and that's the only substance within the story 
and a few nice scenes of the sick doctor in heaven which have this nice sort of warm feeling part two is a little bit of an improvement but it still drags in my eyes with more questions and more mystery being added and um, with some nice foreshadowing by the local people saying oh don't go to the castle you know it's evil and all that sort of stuff really but there was nothing really there what made me think okay this is looking good this was it just had nothing the first half didn't feel um, that good um, to me because the first half just didn't really engage me and um, which is a real shame um, because you think the first half would be the half what would grab you you know normally part one is the one what gets you hooked on the story um, but to me uh, like I've said is that the first half just comes across rather static and just doesn't go anywhere so let's see if the second half does improve in any way right part three Part 3 is definitely my favourite of the four, simply because the story finally picks up the pace and starts to run with the ideas it's got. And we finally get the confrontation with the Doctor and the Master in a 1970s phone call style like in Terror of the Autons. Uh, so to me part 3 is where the, the action is at and that's where the story I feel is at its best, is at part 3. Um, where they're getting this rather bizarre cliffhanger which sort of reminds me of the Trail of the White Worm, that sort of cliffhanger. If you've listened so to with things looking up in part 3 I thought this story could only get better. <laughs> oh no, no, it only got worse. It dipped again, it went back to its original state which is just to plod along. Oh, don't get me wrong but part 4 does have its moments, it does have its nuggets of goodness um, which I'll talk about when I get onto the master. But yeah, I don't know why Justin Richards thought, oh, I'll go back to a nice slow pace now. You know, I need to think of stuff to do, so I'll just slow the pace down of the story. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't get it. Somehow, you know, when the story concludes as well, you think that the story is finished. But somehow the story keeps on going for another five minutes, and you're just like, oh, please finish. You know, you're just kicking a dead horse. Just stop it. Oh. Yeah, I'm not really a fan. So to conclude the actual story and the plot of it, the plot line's quite interesting. The master's plan is very interesting, but I just feel that this story um, has a lot of padding and a lot of layers. And when you finally reach the good stuff and you've finished that off, you're back to more padding and padding, and then you just get little bits of uh, goodness throughout it, really. And the story for some reason just keeps on building and building for no reason when it's already got enough plot points um, within the story to sustain it. It just keeps on adding stuff for no reason which I just really don't get. The Sixth Doctor played by Colin Baker. Yes, as you would expect, Colin is on fine form uh, with him getting some great sharp moments with him having an argument with himself about having a biscuit. Mel will not be pleased with you, Doctor. Um, and when we get moments where he just snaps and becomes rather serious when he hears the word Dominus, which means is Latin for master. So we see him gain an interest um, when that's mentioned. And we have, you know, some of his famous outbursts at uh, Professor uh, Gobinar, um, which is sort of, I think it means master in another language. Um, I'm not sure. Um, really, I can't remember. But he has like an outburst thinking he's the master, so he just thinks, you know, the master's regenerated, so you must be the master, so I'm going to have a go at you. Um, which is rather a nice little moment. Uh, he becomes quite showy off to, he uh, to Heather, you know, oh, I can get a unit pass, you know, he gets a VIP unit pass for this thing. And he's quite cocky, which is quite nice to see the sick doctor because he's quite arrogant and quite cocky, uh, which I do like. And he sort of gets shot down by Heather. Um, and he gets this rather funny moment um, involving uh, some emails with a Russian lady sending pictures. Cheeky old sexy, eh? Getting the lady still. Heather, played by Kate Kennedy. Now Heather to me just screams Liz Shaw and Joe Grant mixed together. As she's a scientist and is very much uh, the Doctor's equal with her application being successful and the Doctor's not. She has a great curiosity to her which is always great for a companion and she has this nice reassurance and nice sort of motherly figure to her in a way she's a bit like Evelyn in that regard I guess but she's quite young and youthful and quite young spirited I guess um, as for the Joe Grant side well she makes the Doctor quite a bit of tea really so I guess that's Joe really um, 
but Heather is a marvellous companion, I think, but she's a fantastic supporting character. She gets some fantastic moments with the Sixth Doctor, and to me, I really want to hear some more Sixth Doctor and Heather adventures. I mean, I think they'll be a great combo. Now, The Master, played by Alex McQueen. Ah, uh, yes, the Sinister Camp Master is back. Huzzah! Um, but this is probably not his best outing, as you probably can tell from my thoughts on the actual plotline in the story. Um, but it certainly is fun to have McQueen's master back, because um, he's got a very interesting plan involving sort of brains and that which becomes more apparent in episode 4. Um, and I just think that it's a very good idea what he's trying to get at. Um, I just like the plotline of the master. Um, but the master isn't a prominent feature. Um, within the first half of the story, you know, he's very much lurking in the shadows waiting for the Doctor um, Which is a bit like Annual Obey Me because the Master didn't really feature heavily within the first half of the story um, But I think the two Masters will probably change that because obviously it's got two Masters and so they're gonna uh, Utilize that to their best advantage. I hope um, really um, Now what, like I said earlier in the review, that this story does add stuff to the McQueen's master with this technically being his first story. Um, with us getting a flashback of a regeneration, what we can presume of a regeneration and the words the Sixth Doctor use around it, it can only sort of uh, hint at this is the first appearance of the McQueen's master. Now Justin Richards, the way he has wrote McQueen's master, you can tell that McQueen's personality and his persona isn't quite there yet and Alex McQueen plays that rather well it's a very bit, clever bit of writing by Justin Richards so you can see that how Alex McQueen's master got from where he is in this story to where he ends up in Dark Eyes or wherever however his timeline works. Now the story does leave uh, some questions on the master obviously what happened you know will it explain the flashback so hopefully that uh, in the two masters those answers will be expanded on because we get this nice scene involving a fisherman which gets a very dark ending. So what do I think of Vampire of the Mind as a whole? Well I think the cast do a marvellous job throughout and the rapport between McQueen's Master and Colin Baker's Doctor is certainly a treat for your ears and is definitely electric throughout when they finally do get that great banter between them and great rapport between them. Um, now, it's just a shame the story wasn't really there to support them. Um, now, with this story, you think with all these 1970s stuff going on, um, with this story being set in the same place as the Sea Devils, um, and the whole sort of 70s sort of premise of the story, you'd think I'll be jumping and dancing on rooftops. Sadly, that's not the case. I really want to appreciate this story, I really want to like it, but there's just something about this story what just hinders me from enjoying it. I can't buy a finger on what stops me from enjoying Instead, this. Instead, we end up with padding practically throughout with nuggets of goodness scattered within it. The best way to describe this story is pass the parcel without the big prize at the end. It's like Justin Richards was worried that it'd run out of steam, hence why all the mystery being thrown in. And when it comes down to the conclusion, I felt rather dissatisfied. Um, but there are some positives, you know, Heather, the master, and the sound design with some nice little eerie cliffhangers and good old sexy. I just hope that uh, the two masters delivers um, because otherwise this trilogy uh, will be memorable for the wrong reasons and it just turns out the way this trilogy is going it looks like it's going to flop but hopefully John Dorney can redeem this trilogy because this story is just a padded mess. I mean you might enjoy it, I, you know people have given it 9 out of 10 so I suppose I better rate this. I mean, I feel quite generous giving it this rating, um, but uh, maybe on another listen. I mean, when I first listened to this, I thought, wow, you know, it's a quite a decent story, but as I've listened to it again, it's gone down uh, my mark um, by a little bit. So my overall rating for Vampire of the Mind is seven cat badges out of 10 are still a pretty good mark for it you know it's not the not bad at all I guess but I just think that there is so much padding within there you know there are only a couple of things that redeem it for me within this story and that nice little expansion on Alex McQueen's master gives it a nice little added bonus um, really I mean like I said this being like a 
in in the style of a 1970s story you'd think I'd be all over this but it just seems so bizarre that this just doesn't really connect with me and I thought this would be probably my favorite out of the set but um, still got the two masters to go and that's out this Monday on the 13th uh, so hopefully that will be good I mean it's John Dorney so fingers crossed it will be good because this has been a bit of a disappointment so there we are my review of Vampire of Mind hope you have enjoyed this review and I'll see you on my next video, whatever that will be. So thank you very much and goodbye.